there are six hepatitis C genotypes, one through six, and then they have subtypes, for example, 1A and 1B. The genotype does not determine the likelihood of progressing to cirrhosis, the likelihood of developing cancer, or anything about the natural history of disease or their prognosis. However, because each of the genotypes has differences subtly in the various proteins that it has, the protease, the polymerase, the NS5A, the response to different medication regimens varies. So genotype does determine which treatment we're going to use and often differences in the likelihood of response. Future therapies are developing towards more what we call pan-genotypic therapies, which work across the genotypes. And then maybe genotype will become obsolete as a prognostic factor. But for the moment, and I think for the foreseeable future, genotype will be important. Because I suspect that even when we have pan-genotypic regimens, there may be opportunities to use less expensive regimens for the easier to treat genotypes, and obviously reserving the more expensive regimens for the hardest to treat. So genotyping is critical. It is commercially available. It should not be sent when you get your first antibody test, but only after you confirm with a positive viral load. In the United States, 75% of patients are genotype 1. Of those, about two-thirds to three-quarters are 1A, and the remaining are 1B. Genotype 1 has historically been our hardest-to-treat genotype. However, the advent of direct-acting antiviral agents targeted specifically at genotype 1 have raised our genotype 1 cure rate, or SVR rate, to the highest possible level. Now we have cure rates over 95% with all oral regimens for genotype 1. Genotype 2 has been our traditionally easiest to treat and easiest to cure genotype. However, the only approved regimen right now is cefospivir and ribavirin. That regimen offers about a 90% cure rate. There are probably regimens that would push that higher, but they have not been approved by the FDA. So we only have a single DAA regimen with ribavirin for genotype 2, where we're using multiple agents for genotype 1. So it's not that genotype 2 is harder to cure, it's that we're not giving it as much therapy. Genotype 2 was the first regimen to have effective all oral therapy. When cefospivir and ribavirin for 12 weeks cured 90% of patients with genotype 2, it was a revolution. There are other agents that have activity in genotype 2. However, people have been reluctant to test them because there are not a, that many patients in the U.S., because you'd have to establish superiority statistically over the 90%. And so those agents have not been approved by the FDA for use in genotype 2. But we know from in vitro data that many of the other agents either currently available or in development have activity in genotype 2. Whether they should be used up front to try to get us from 90 to 95 to 99, or whether they should be reserved for more difficult to treat patients like cirrhotic patients, or for those that fail first-line therapy, are all open questions that we need further research on. Genotype 3 is right now the genotype where we have the most difficulty. The only approved regimen is cefospivir and ribavirin for 24 weeks, which has under a 90% cure rate. 
and in cirrhosis even lower. Some have proposed going back to interferon, but I think the era of interferon is over. Fortunately, newer therapies that will be able to be added to cefospivir or hopefully whole new regimens are being developed that will have more activity in genotype 3 and hopefully will be approved by the FDA soon to offer an improved option, hopefully at a lower cost, back to 12 weeks for genotype 3 patients. Genotype 4 is uncommon in the United States, but is quite common in certain parts of the world, for example, Egypt. So in places that have large amounts of Middle Eastern immigrants in the U.S., and certainly outside the U.S., treatment options for genotype 4 are needed. We don't have an approved uh, interferon-free regimen for genotype 4 that's currently acceptable, though many of the approved regimens do have activity in genotype 4. So either we can treat off-label or wait for newer therapies to either be approved for those genotypes that are either existing or in development. So it is expected that we will have effective regimens with reasonable data for genotypes 1 through 4. Genotypes 5 and 6 are very uncommon in the U.S., though they can be a significant proportion outside the U.S. Because there aren't a lot of patients, even though some of the trials have sought to enroll all genotypes, we have very little data on genotypes 5 and 6, and thus very, no FDA-approved regimens. I don't expect any soon. But uh, I do expect that as the ability to start mixing and matching drugs based on their predicted activity, we hopefully will have some off-label combinations that we can use for those few patients in our practice that are genotype 5 and 6.